Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. It's supposed to rain in the next hour or so. Uh, thunderstorms, actually, which we desperately need because we haven't had rain in about uh, 10 days and it's been hotter than hell. Grass hasn't been growing as fast as it normally has been. Uh, and uh, I don't think I need to mow my front yard because it's, you know, it's a little long, but it's not bad. But the back is pretty bad. And it's supposed to rain for the next three or four days. So I won't have an opportunity to mow it. I wanna mow the back right now, but I wanna get it done really quick. And the best way I know how to do that is to fire up my Scots by John Deere. The one that I fixed uh, about a month ago. Uh, I have it listed really high. <laughs> it's listed at like 775 or 750, something like that. It's really high, you know, but I wanted to gauge how much I can get it. You know what I'm saying? Some nut may buy it. And if lawnmower sales weren't slowing down this time of season, I probably would have sold it. Actually, I had a couple offers of 500 and 550. Probably should have taken it, but regardless, it's a nice mower, you know. I could always use it to mow my lawn if I didn't want to drag out my zero turn, which I haven't done at all yet this entire summer. It's been sitting there since last summer. I haven't even needed to fire it up because I've been using the lawn mowers that I've been fixing to mow my lawn. I guess that's a good thing about being a small engine, guys. I never have a shortage of lawn mowers to use, you know, and to test. So it's been sitting here for a while. Oh, we got plenty of gas. Actually, I could use some oil, actually. But I think it'll be good enough to mow the lawn in the back. Let's see if it fires up. Turned on the fuel shut off, or turned it off. Neutral. Choke. getting any spark because this has been sitting here in the uh, Sun and not moved for quite a while I'm thinking maybe if you just take something hard like this pulley I just found in the backyard tap the bowl maybe the float and the needle was stuck in the hole therefore it's not dropping if it doesn't drop Fuel's not gonna get in there. Let's try it now. Mate. I think it almost wanted to. Well, my thought process of getting it done quickly is not going <laughs> to happen if I have to go and take the hood off, check for spark, take the carburetor apart and see, you know. Pretty surprised. It's been a pretty reliable mower, but uh, it has been sitting there for a while. Who knows what happened? I'll probably try to figure that out some other time. Uh, today, I'm going to be putting this engine, mounting it on the Toro uh, lawn tractor that I got from uh, Nick from Bellport. Uh, but first, like I said, it just bothers me. I gotta mow the lawn in the back somehow. I'll grab one of those push mowers in the back and see. I think the only one that I haven't tested yet, after I fixed it, is this one. I tried everything else. So let's try this pearl recycler with a Tecumseh engine on it.
priming it a few times. Let's see if it starts up. It's in here for about a week. Here's the backyard. Uh, I had to do it over again a couple of times, but uh, still have clumpage. Clumpage. That's all right. Looks good. Now, on to the task at hand. So I took some doing, moving stuff around. I've got so much crap over there to get it right here in the middle. There's the engine with it. We just uh, put together. Hopefully it works. And uh, this thing had a Kohler Courage in it. Uh, I got a box of carburetors here from Nick from Bellport. And uh, like you see, it has a deck. It's in good shape. Tires hold air. It's been sitting here for a couple of weeks. Uh, it is a five speed, I believe. No, this is a variable speed transmission. Spring loaded up and down height adjusters for the deck. This battery is Dunsky, that's what Nick told me, but at least it's a core charge, right? Everything else looks pretty good. Gonna have to remove this uh, hood. And there you see it. It's a 5 8 belt for the drive and I believe a half for the uh, lower one, the deck belt. Harness is there. Nothing's been cut, which is a miracle from Nick. However, the throttle is on the other side. It needs to be on this side. I'm going to see if I can remove that hood easily. There's a hood. It wasn't as easy as a John Deere or a uh, Craftsman. Did take some doing to pull it off. I think I might have bent something. I'm going to bend it back. Uh, I was testing this throttle and even though it is on the uh, right hand side, it does bend enough to get it to around here. So I think that's okay. I think that's good. This is the harness for the light switch. I had to disconnect it. And here comes the rain. Just for shits and giggles, I'm going to take this battery out, put it on a charger. I do not have a battery for this. Unless I take it out of my van. Taking out the battery and uh, putting a multimeter to it and it has 7.5 volts. Let's put it on a battery charger. It's 
So I've been uh, trying to find some engine mounting bolts for this. And then when I was looking, I kind of saw a drip. And now I remember that this engine, the block actually had a small crack in here and I used JB Weld and did it. And then I wanted to investigate to see whether or not there was an oil drip underneath. So I wiped it and it's been sitting here for a while and I don't feel any drips, okay? But I did see a drip coming from this hose and I think this is the oil breather, you know what I'm saying? So maybe it's coming from here. But I don't see any drips coming from there, so I look. <laughs> we can just uh, try to do what we can do, right? Um, I'm going to try to mount it anyway, but with the knowledge of maybe it might drip. Maybe. Okay, here we go. Still no leaks. So I got all four engine mounting bolts in, left two weren't terrible, it sucked, but it wasn't terrible, front right, okay, right rear bolt, there's like two layers of the frame, whereas they only have a little hole that's cut out on the very bottom one that you can get it with an extension, 916 socket, up to the bolt. Then at the same time, the drag link for the steering is in the way of the hole. You get it? So you have to turn the wheel all the way to the left and put pressure on it all the way. So I had to use one hand to turn the steering wheel all the way, right? Because if I let go, it would, it would turn another 45 degrees back again. And then that little smidgen more is not going to allow this socket to go into the hole, you know? So I had to hold it like that with one hand, stick it in there with the bolt on there to try to fish it in there so that it would grip the threads like that. I had to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know you guys know what I mean. It sucked. I came to the back shed to get something. I walked by here and I went like this. Ah, what the hell? Let me try. <laughs> started just before. <laughs> figure why sometimes tractors start and sometimes they don't <laughs> you know what I mean but I have a feeling that uh, the spark plug was all all wet so it wouldn't start you know um, so you know after I mow the lawn already with a push mower now it starts and attach the starter wire to the bottom washer with uh, the bottom stem for the washer and a what feels like a 7 16 nut it's on the very bottom and to tighten it and then looks like this wiring harness from a Kohler fits this wiring harness from a Kohler <laughs> that would that's easy right okay so no crazy wiring plug and play Nick didn't cut this so I just plug it in good awesome this is for the front lights this one here coming from the engine is supposed to go all the way underneath to the other side of the engine. This plugs on ground. This plugs onto the fuel solenoid, which I no longer have. So I don't have to connect that, see? So that, this right side should be good. Uh, here's a, here's a, 
a fuse, but of course it's not clear, so you can't see if it's busted or not, unless you put it up to the light, it's okay. It's a uh, 20 amp fuse. It's not clear. Have you ever seen one that isn't clear? Well, today you saw one. It's not clear. And uh, where does this plug on to? You know, no holes anywhere. What the hell? You know what I mean? Let's see another dangle here for now. Okay, now I've got this throttle cable now that's on the other side. I need to try to fish this, bend it into the Z-Bend, like that, and then try the throttle on this side. You want to make sure that when you choke it, it's all the way back here. I went to the backyard to the other throttle plate I had to get this thingamabob. That's right, this is officially called a thingamabob. So when you go to a store to say, hey, do you have that thingamabob to the um, Kohler 19 Courage engine throttle plate? The guy goes, oh yeah, you mean this thingamabob? Okay, yeah, that's it. Thanks. There we go, that's it. So that's choke, should be on choke. That should be off choke. And this is low throttle. I guess we're gonna have to prove it, right? Damn. All right, let's prove it. There we go. Uh, choke is open, throttle all the way up and choke there you go boom off choke and low throttle awesome that worked out well now we're going to work on the fuel line i'm fortunate enough that this fuel tank is half full of gas this is a huge fuel tank too huge and uh it already has uh, fuel shut off which is the reason why it's not like coming out so look I'm just gonna open it up and see if it comes out Oops, um, quickly boom good flow smells okay <laughs> got this segment of fuel line here that's nice and rubbery it's not new but it'll work this one here that's in a fuel filter kind that you use for fuel pump type engines but you know it'll be fine and of course i'm a dipstick that's right i'm a 14 karat dipstick Fetus, you know what you are you're a dipstick a 14 karat dipstick why i'm a dipstick because i put this cover on without putting the hose on the carburetor first so I can't see where the nozzle is. I'm just gonna feel around for it, but then it'll be difficult for me to get the clamp on unless I, you know, weasel it with a pair of pliers like this without without seeing it. And I do it without seeing it, and I'm gonna need one of those curved ones actually. And it's tough to do. And I can't do it. Well, all right, ready? I'm gonna turn on the fuel. You guys saw how good flow it was, so. Fuel should be flowing through here. And I'm gonna wait and see if there's any leakage going on over there in the carburetor. Leakage. And there you go, like clockwork. Kohler Courage, Kohler Command carburetors leak all the time hey unless you bang it when you bang it right the float vibrates a little and maybe the needle seats into the hole see now the rubber the gaskets the rubber tip on the needle is exposed to moisture the gas and maybe swells a little bit to seal the hole before when it was leaking non-stop it was because 
you know, it hadn't been run for a while. It's not lubricated. Uh, the float, the float was still down, or like they say in Canada, down. And then you, the fuel goes into the fuel bowl, raises the fuel float. The needle isn't quite seating, so that's why it was leaking. But you tap it like that, see? And the vibration of the needle goes and seats it, and therefore now it stops it, and so it's not leaking. Kind of a lousy design for the Kohler uh, carburetors. I mean, commands, Kohler uh, courages, they're all the same. Um, and they always leak. I always have problems with leakage. So that's the reason why you have to have a fuel shut off for a Kohler. And that's all I have to say about that. I'm gonna leave the uh, air cleaner off because I have a feeling we're gonna have to adjust and all that stuff. And I wanna make sure I have uh, access to the, the choke. So now all we need to do, guys, is to put a battery in here. <laughs> I don't have a battery, except for one that's in the back of my van, the one I use for my winch, because I have no choice. I'm going to have to whip it out. Here we go. Brand new Everstart 230 CCA. Um, 2487 Walmart. I've used it a few times on my uh, picking. Closer. Uh, I'm gonna find a couple of nuts and bolts. I'm always searching for nuts and bolts. Get that on there. Okay, batteries on there. I did manage to uh, get the clamp on with this. Oh man, I guess we have to just try to start this thing, huh? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Got the engine mounted. Got fuel going to the carburetor. Got the starter cable attached to the starter. A battery connected to everything. All right, here we go. Let's hope it starts. And now remember, this engine is a rebuilt engine. I have no idea if it works. I'm turning the key. I do see a light on the display. I'm stepping on the brake. I have a second click. I'm going to a third click now. It's on choke. Nothing. I got nothing. Zero. It's in neutral. I'm sitting on it. I'm stepping on the brake. What's this, what's this thing for? Ooh! There's another foot lever, the higher one. And I pushed that down. Ooh, turns. Which means the solenoid and the starter works and the ignition switch works. And it's uh, when I turn it and I step on this lever here and while I'm cranking, showing 11.3 volts. Well, 11.3 volts is not strong enough to turn an engine. Gotta have 12.4 or higher. So I'm gonna have to charge this battery. So I've got the uh, jumper pack on the battery. So I'm gonna try to start it now. Still not strong enough to turn the uh, motor. So I'm gonna have to charge the battery overnight. But uh, like I said, I was a little worried about how hard it was to crank. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't have high hopes that this engine will work because I must have done something. Maybe I put maybe the piston's too big for that block. I'm not sure. So. Uh, Guess we're just gonna have to do this tomorrow. So, while we did get to try to start the engine, we just didn't have enough juice to give it good cranks. Or maybe we do, but the engine that I rebuilt is not easily crankable, you know? It's very tight. Uh, so, 
Maybe the piston is too big for the bore. Uh, the rings are too stiff for it. Maybe, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm not able to crank this right now with the battery that we have. We'll try on the next episode after I charge the battery full and uh, give it a fighting chance, you know? If it still doesn't work, I'll take the spark plug out and crank it that way, right? That way it sloshes the oil that's in this engine that's new. Slosh it around all the parts, maybe it'll loosen up a little bit. Put the uh, spark plug back in again and try it again. But uh, good news though is that we did get the engine put together, right? From the stuff that I needed to do. We did mount it uh, on there. It did connect on relatively easily with the existing harness for a Kohler Courage. Uh, we know that it with the key, it starts it, it cranks it, right? Uh, which means the solenoid, the all the safety, well, not all the safety switches, at least the seat and brake safety switch work, and uh, the solenoid works and the ignition switch work. So we know that all those things work, which is, is just great because you don't have to work on those things, you know? A carburetor seems to not leak now, and we've got fuel going to the carburetor. So that's still a lot of progress we've made on getting an engine for this tractor, you know? And uh, tractors, sometimes it could be nothing, you know, an easy fix, one episode and you're done. Or it could be like my Scots by John Deere, which now runs great, you know, uh, but it did take eight episodes to do. And this is only part two of this project, you know, or three. Do you want to count the engine as two parts? Yeah, because, you know, you have to get the engine running before you can put it on here, right? <laughs> and we have yet to see it run. But uh, it's looking okay. You know, we'll try some things and we'll get it worked out. But uh, thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. next time on mowers and blowers hey if you guys enjoyed the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also hit that little bell that way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them remember to follow my instagram and facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowersandblowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.